Welcome to my Texas workshop. I'm Randy Lammers. I'm Aaron Keevan. This is Worth Knowing. We've talked about a lot of different types of screws. Screws that we rolled threads in metal, screws for plastics, and today we're going to talk about self-drilling screws. Woohoo! Screws that drill their own way in. Now, before I get started, we have a lot of customers that will call these self-tapping screws. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between a self-drilling screw and a self-tapping screw. So this right here is a tapping screw and that is a sheet metal screw it's meant to go into pre-punched holes or pre-drilled holes this is a self drilling screw it's got a drill bit on the yeah. end of the screw how cool is that yeah it's pretty cool yeah right? it's like combined hey let's take a drill bit weld it to the end of the screw i now i've got a bit and a screw combination that's kind of fun okay. so yes so these screws drill their own holes you don't need a pilot hole so i want to make sure people use the right terminology not tapping screws but self-drilling screws yeah you don't get misalignment when you're actually putting these materials together two materials right. together yeah. uh, you have different point links that go with uh whatever thickness of material that you're actually working with so it's pretty cool Yep. Now, one thing you do need to contend with is you do have different point links. You've got different uh, metal thicknesses you have to deal with. So you should be concerned with that flute length also, right? Sure. The, uh, so if you think about this, this screw, the point has to go through the metal all the way through before the threads start because the threads will advance faster than you can drill. Mm -hmm. And the flute length is important because that then is displacing the metal chips out. So make sure that we don't get this into metals that are longer, uh, thicker than what these flute points are. Now, understand, this screw must be harder than the material that it's going into. So kind of maximize at HRC 30. So less than HRC 30, you get in materials harder than that, be careful here. Screws gotta be harder than materials going into. Now, we're talking about hardness. Yep. These screws have to be hard, so they're case hardened. So we have about an HRC 50 outside casing, yep. and the core is still pretty hard. It's 30 to 40. Right, yeah, and that's coming out of SAE J78. So that core hardness can be up to 40, and we do have to have a concern. We do have concerns with hydrogen and brittlement. So. Hydrogen and brittlement. So that's our next episode. That is a scientific phenomenon that happens in metals. So stay tuned for our next episode where we'll go into detail on hydrogen and brittlement. We are concerned about that with these type of screws, however. Yep. So I guess what we should talk about too is how, how these actually drive in. So we have uh, the installation tools that we're supposed to use oh, with gosh, that, yes. right? Yes, absolutely. Let me pull out my old, trusted, and true 1980s <laughs> screw gun. It's as old as I am. Yeah, this is, okay, thank you for that. <laughs> I have used this for all of these years. What, what, my gosh, what are we going on, 40 years almost? Now, this is a 2500 RPM variable speed screw gun, not an impact tool. Right. We don't want to use impact tools for these type of screws because that impaction is not right for these points. Typically, this one is a 2500 RPM screw, RPM screw gun. Right, and so your optimal situation is dependent upon your material and the diameter. Mm -hmm. It's about 1000 to 3000 RPM. Correct, Yeah. correct. We find a lot of these screws are done in the uh, number eight, number 10, maybe one quarter inch diameter are the vast majority of these screws putting right. these buildings together like we're in right here. Mm -hmm. So RPM is important. So make sure you match your RPM. Now, this is a variable speed. It goes up to 2,500, but it's a variable speed. So sure. I can match this. Also, Aaron, is in load. You may see a lot of people want to get down and put a lot of load on these parts before they even get the RPM going. Right, too much pressure. Too much pressure, and what that does is it creates too much heat at the point mm -hmm. and will bore, uh, burn up that point, so therefore you don't drill properly. So we want just enough pressure so that you keep your screw where it's supposed to be, pull your trigger to the RPM it's supposed to be, and then push the screw on in. 
through holes, uh, if you do have them and you're, you're trying to mate to the, that mating material, you're gonna make sure that through hole is gonna be larger than the drill bit itself and ideally even to the major of the thread itself. That so. is, that's absolutely correct. So why don't we run some screws and yeah. let's show people what we're talking about. Yeah, let's walk over the setup. Over okay, there. very good. Well, let's take a look at drilling some screws, but first I have another Uncle Mo story. All right. <laughs> so Mo came all the way to East Texas to help me build my pole barn. That's uh, up at the top of the hill. Sure. And he drove his, uh, uh, pulled his travel trailer down here and we went to work on building us. Now, Mo is a expert on self-drilling screws. He he really has. He's built a lot of pole barns. He's teaching you something? He's <laughs> teaching me. And I went to school on self-drilling screws. I always knew theory, but theory is one thing. Getting out there and building a whole barn, putting in self-drilling screws, you're going to learn a lot. So I'm kind of like the cobbler whose kids have no shoes. <laughs> yeah, I don't have much in the way of screw inventory, so I go to the local hardware store, store and buy the best screws I can buy. So that's what I did. So let's take a run of test real quick because I've done that. I've got some screws here that came from the local hardware store. And let's just see what happens. All right. So let's see, get our safety glasses on, of yeah, course. Yeah, get that. You might grab that drill over there. Yep. I'll grab one of these screws. Okay. Here's the uh, local hardware store. All right. Got you get... set up. And the reason we're putting on gloves, obviously, we got some metal shavings and things that potentially get, get us cut. So just trying to. Keep so this is safe. a this is a number eight uh, by three quarter uh, self drilling screw, and so what I want to do is I want to put my my uh, tip down there, put my screw enough end sure load thing. to keep the screw where it's supposed to be, pull the trigger and go full end load that we need. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be engaging too well, does it? Randy? Yeah. Nope. Okay, so that didn't that didn't work very good. No, it didn't. What's the thickness of the metal? It's 075, and so these uh, screws should be able to drill through this 075 material. And this yeah. is what we found is probably about one in five of those hardware bolt screws don't perform. Yeah. So this is one from our inventory, Randy. So maybe try that one out. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this is from our inventory. Same screw, just from our inventory. So let's just kind of go right beside where we were. Sure. Again, just end load enough to keep the screw point where it needs to be. Exactly. Go full RPM and then go ahead and let it drill on in. Okay? Let's go. Drill. Drill, baby, drill. Look at that go. There you go. Seated perfectly. Okay, so this is unfortunately what happens out there. And this is where I'm saying screws are not created equal and you cannot necessarily see it. There's minute differences in the point of the screw that the common person cannot see. It's all about that performance. So this happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So Mo and I are out there and I'm tossing screws through the <laughs> woods because I can't get them to drill and he's saying, Randy, where'd you buy these screws? And he goes, pull them out of your inventory. Y'all run performance testing. And he told me this. He said out there in West Texas, they have a metal building company. Mm -hmm. And every time they're looking at changing suppliers, they send him screws to test because he knows exactly how to do it and he knows that not all screws are created equal. So big, big lesson learned on self-drilling screws. Know what the performance testing is. Yep, you gotta get it from that manufacturer. Absolutely. So we have another setup here. So Mo taught me this one as well, Aaron. When you have multiple panels that you want to put together and you end up with a gap. Yep. So I want to demonstrate what happens here. Sure thing. So that's what we have. You have to take both panels into consideration for your total thickness of material. A lot of people don't understand that. Right. And so we, let's just do this and let's talk about what happened. This is the same screw, by the way, this is our good inventory. So this is the same screw that's, right. that we've been See using. See this slight gap here, if you're looking right here. So we've set this up. So we, we'll, we'll get started with drilling through the first piece. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like you're having struggles. So I don't want to redo this. That drilled through, and that's OK. But the point you should have seen there is that it drills through the first one, then the thread hits, then it's slowed down, it yep. stopped on me. A lot of times what happens there is that it won't drill through the second one. The threads want to advance 
faster than the drill point drills. Exactly. So you end up burning up that drill point or you end up clamping incorrectly. Exactly. And you're not just using one self-drilling screw, you're using a lot when you're making a building. Absolutely. And so time is everything. Mm. So again, choosing the right drill point for the total thickness of material inclusive of the gap. So Aaron, in conclusion, not all self-drilling screws are created equal. You must make sure you're buying from a reputable source where you know performance testing is being conducted. Absolutely. Of concern too, obviously, is our drill flute length. It's being critical to material thickness. Mm -hmm. Got to make sure that point length is just long enough before that thread actually starts to engage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And RPM. RPM is critical. The right RPM for the size screw that you're putting in and the material and watch your end loads. Make sure you don't put excessive end loads on that tool before you get that RPM up. And that correct, the correct tooling too. So we have to ensure that we're using a, you know, a direct drive type screw um, gun. So no impact tools. No impact tools. No impact, no impact tools. tools. Uh, of concern, we talked about case hardened steel. Yes. You know, this is 50, upwards of 50 HRC. The core hardness can be upwards of 40. So hydrogen embrittlement, again, we're gonna cover that in our next episode. I'm excited about that. Great scientific subject. You're gonna be really interested in how we cover that one. So the bottom line is self-drilling screws. You don't have to drill the holes. Right. So therefore you're gonna save a lot of time mm -hmm. and time also equals money. Save time and save money with good quality self-drilling screws. That's worth knowing. If you like the content you saw today, hit subscribe and the bell icon and we'll see you next time.